The Football Story 2030 presents a football legend, Luis Vinicius de Menezes, better known as Luis Vinicio. Born in Balu Horizont on February 28, 1932, was a central forward and former Brazilian football coach. Vinicio, nicknamed the Lion of Botafogo, was a centre-forward with significant physicality, endowed with a powerful shot and good speed. His game was solid and not as flashy as one might expect from a Brazilian, so much so that for these characteristics he resembled more a European player than a Brazilian one. Vinicio began playing football in 1942 in the youth team of Entereros before moving to Metalucina in 1946. His professional adventure began at Botafogo in 1951. His official debut in the Carioca Championship took place on November 11, 1951, in Botafogo Olaria 4-1, where he scored a goal. He formed a formidable attacking trio for Botafogo with the superstar Garincha and the Italian-Brazilian Dino D.A. Costa. His best season was 1953, with 13 goals in 22 matches, but on September 7, in Botafogo Flamengo 3-0, after scoring and earning a penalty kick, he was forced to leave the field due to a suspected fracture. The following year, he played only 17 matches, scoring 7 goals. In the summer of 1955, during a tour of Europe with Botafogo, he was scouted by Napoli's executives who acquired him. On September 18, 1955, Vinicio made his debut in the Azure jersey for the Napoli-Torino match. The kickoff and the ball at the center. Vinicio passes to Omade, who passes back to Castelli, who launches forward. Vinicio races forward and reaches the ball, overpowering Grosso and Beersart, and from the edge of the area, he unleashes a missile under the crossbar of goalkeeper Rigamonti. A goal in just 40 seconds from the start of the match. A thunderous debut. The Vinicio Jepsen partnership was dubbed VU2, like the German rocket progenitor of all missiles. Unfortunately for Napoli, the V2, as it was nicknamed, did not work very well. The rivalry and jealousy between the two strikers were too strong. The striking duo exploded only once, against Pro Patria, 8 1, with three goals from Vinicio and two from Jepsen. The double centre forward was the illusion of half a season. In the 1956-1957 season, Vinicio finished second in the top scorer ranking with 18 goals, also scoring a poker in a Palermo-Napoli match ending 1-4, and fourth in the 1957-1958 season, with 21 goals. On December 6, 1959, he inaugurated the San Paolo Stadium with a goal in a semi-bicycle kick, allowing Napoli to beat Juventus 2-1. In 1960, after five seasons at Napoli and 69 goals, he moved to Bologna. After one season with the Bologna team, the following year he played few games, being surpassed by the young Harold Nielsen, who would later become Serie A's top scorer twice in a row. In the summer of 1962, he returned to Brazil, soon called back by the executives of Lane Rossi Vicenza. After a decent first year, he returned to score regularly and scored 17 goals in 1963-1964, giving the Venetian sixth place and ranking third among the top scorers. In 1964-1965, he finished tenth in the championship, and in 1965-1966, he scored 25 goals. The first to reach this quota after him would be Marco van Basten in 1991-1992 earning him the title of top scorer, Lane Rossi finished fifth ahead of Milan. In the summer of 1966, he left Vicenza because called by Helenio Herrera to inter Milan. The Mago simply wanted to remove him from the market so that some big team would not acquire him. Indeed, Vinicio was not only overshadowed by the two foreigners Joey and Suarez, but his way of interpreting the role of the centre-forward had nothing to do with Inter's style of play. Thus, he played only eight matches in black and blue, scoring only one goal. After that season, practically a wasted year, already 35 years old, he returned to Vicenza, where he ended his career, with over 150 goals in Serie A, contributing with his goals to another consecutive promotion from Serie B. With 68 goals in 141 matches, Luis Vinicio is the best white and red striker of all time in Serie A. After ending his playing career, Vinicio began coaching in 1968 at Inter Napoli in Serie C. In 1969, he moved to Brindisi, 
leading them to promotion to Serie B. After a brief stint at Ternana in 1970, in 1971, he returned to Brindisi. In 1973, he moved to coach Napoli, being the first in Italy to apply the Dutch total football style. With the Neapolitan team, he finished third in the 1973-1974 season, and narrowly missed winning the championship in the 1974-1975 season. In the 1976-1977 season, he was called by President Umberto Lenzini to lead Lazio, taking on the heavy legacy of a coach like Tommaso Marastrelli, who had moved to become a sports director and suggested Vinicio's hiring to Lenzini. The Brazilian coach found an old acquaintance in his Roman experience, Pino Wilson, who had been captain of Inter Napoli when Vinicio was the coach. In his first year, he finished the championship in fifth place a placement that earned him confirmation for the following season, which proved to be more complicated than expected, with the team involved in the fight for survival, on March 28, 1978, after a 3-1 defeat in Foggia, Vinicio was sacked and replaced by Bob Lavati. In the following seasons, he coached teams like Avellino, where he resigned, being replaced by Claudio Tobia, Pisa, and Udinese. He ended his coaching career in 1991-1992 in Serie C2 at the helm of Juve Stabia, which narrowly avoided relegation after a particularly troubled season. Thank you for choosing our channel. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Your engagement is our source of energy. Thank you.